The Coros Apex 2 is a pretty awesome watch packed into a pretty good size package. It doesn't weigh a lot. We'll get to the specifics here in a little bit, but what's new? What is different from the Apex 46, the Apex 42? What's different about this watch? Why should you get it? Let's take a look. As always, I do need to let you know that Coros did send the Apex 2 to me to review. I didn't purchase it. They're not going to see this ahead of time and proof it. The typical YouTube disclosure stuff. You know the deal. It's 2022, almost 23. Let's just get to it. Right out of the box, we can see there are definitely some changes in the Apex 2 over the old Apex 46, and that's namely, uh, first of all, we got three buttons now to control it. You've got a dedicated back button down here, which is really nice to have. The digital dial, which is, I love this thing. It's, it's so easy and convenient. And a light button, which is also uh, programmable. You can put that to be, uh, you know, there's a lot of different options. You can hold long, press it, and you can go to a map or whatever you want to program it to, which is pretty cool. It's a good feature. The Apex 46 here had two buttons. We got the digital dial up top and one small button on the bottom, but this dial is actually a good bit smaller and not as easy to use as the dial on the Apex 2, which is really nice. If you were finding this video helpful, if you're learning something about the Apex 2, I'd really appreciate it if you would actually scroll down, click that thumbs up button, give the video a like. It helps out a ton, and I would, like I said, just really appreciate it. When it comes to the size and weight of the Apex 2, it actually more closely resembles the Apex 42, but when we're talking about the Apex 46 here, uh, the actual dimensions of the watch, you can see it is actually smaller. So the Apex 2 is 43 by 42.8 and 12.8 millimeters thick. So the Apex 46 here is actually 46 by 46, That's you know, hence the name. Uh, but it is 11.9 millimeters thick. So the Apex 2 is a hair thicker now, and that does include the new heart rate sensor on the back, which we'll talk more in detail here in just a moment. Uh, and then the overall diameter of the watch is just a little bit smaller too. And it feels nice on the wrist. It does not feel big. And just for reference, you can see what the Apex 2 looks like on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. So obviously you can tell I have the Apex 2 with the nylon band. I quite like this. It is very comfortable on the wrist. I like the, uh, the feel of it. It's just, it feels very nice. You can get it snug, which helps that heart rate as well. And the band is a 20 millimeter quick release band, which you can, you know, get any aftermarket band out there, but this is super comfortable. So the weight of the Apex 2 with the nylon band, threw it on my scale, it's 42 grams, which is really lightweight. The Apex 46 with the silicone band was uh, 55.3 grams, just for reference, and with a nylon band would have been about 45 grams. So with the nylon band, more battery life, which we'll get to, uh, it still weighs less than the Apex 46. But the watch itself without the band is 35 grams. The little nylon band weighs in at seven grams for your 42 grams. The display of the Apex 2 is the same size as the Apex 46, and that's gonna be 240 by 240 resolution or 1.2 inch display. But what's new with the Apex 2 is it now has the touchscreen always on memory LCD display. It's really nice and easy to use. You can actually scroll through your data fields now while you're running, hiking, biking, whatever it is that you might be doing. Uh, or you can actually do it throughout the other screens of the watch now, not just in an activity, which is a pretty cool thing. Touchscreen was not even an option on the Apex 46 or the 42, so that's a big upgrade. When it comes to the construction of the Apex 2, it feels super solid in your hand, on your wrist. It just feels like a really well-built, durable watch. The bezel material of the Apex 2 is a titanium alloy, but this has a PVD coating, so it's actually gonna offer about a two times better durability than the Apex 46. This did not have the PVD coating. The glass of the Apex 2 is the same sapphire glass, which is just virtually indestructible. I mean, you really do not need to go spend any money on a screen protector that's basically throwing your money away. You might as well just light it on fire. You don't need it. My Apex 46, which I've had for about four years, I haven't used it for a while now, but honestly, there's still literally no scratches on that face at all. It is amazing. Sapphire glass, can't beat it. Another upgrade when it comes to construction materials compared to the Apex 46, the Apex 2 now has a titanium cover on the back as well. Same material as the front, just does not have that PVD coating. The Apex 46 was just aluminum, which uh, you know was still pretty durable, but now it's even better. Speaking of durability of the Apex 2, one thing that has changed is that the water resistance rating is now five atmospheres. That's equivalent to about 50 meters or about 164 feet. So Coros does say this is suitable for surface water activities and not really for diving. Uh, the Apex 46 was actually good for about 10 atmospheres, so it could go a little bit deeper. Another thing that's a little interesting is the actual working temperature of the Apex 2. It's changed as well from the Apex 46. So the Apex 2 can actually go to negative four degrees and then up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. The old Apex 46 could only go down to about 14 degrees Fahrenheit, but it could also go up to 140. As far as connectivity goes for the Apex 2, there are definitely a few changes. Now it connects to all of your sensors, like, you know, heart rate sensors, the polar chest straps, or your Coros Pod 2, whatever you're gonna pair it with, uh, via Bluetooth, Bluetooth 5.0. 
So that's a big change. There is no Ant Plus on the Apex 2. You did have Ant Plus and Bluetooth on the Apex 46, so they did take away the Ant Plus. But Coros did bring Wi-Fi to the watch, which is really nice. You can actually connect it to your home network. Uh, you can actually do those updates for the watch straight through this now instead of having to go through the app, which is kind of nice. I like that. So let's talk about the thing that Coros is really known for, and that is obviously their battery life. It's definitely improved in the Apex 2 over the old 46 here. So the Apex 46, just for reference, would get 35 hours in standard GPS. That was the only option. There was no all systems on, none of that. Standard GPS, 35 hours. With the Apex 2 now, however, you can get up to 45 hours in standard GPS, which is pretty darn awesome. There's really not a lot of ultra marathons unless you're doing 200 milers that you need more than that. But let's say you're gonna be in a really dense forest or maybe running through a, you know, a downtown city somewhere where there's a good bit of buildings. You can now turn on all systems on thanks to the all systems on single frequency GPS chipset and that's going to give you up to 30 hours of battery life, which is still pretty darn awesome. But let's say you're going to do something really long and you need more than 45 hours with the Apex 2. Well, your next bet is to go to Ultramax. Coro says that the battery consumption is reduced by about 50% in Ultramax mode, so should be able to go for quite a long time. And for daily use in regular smartwatch mode, you're going to get about 17 days of use. Another really huge update to the Apex 2 over the old Apex 46 is the navigation enhancements. So with the Apex 46 or the 42, you only had breadcrumb trail navigation. That was it. But with the Apex 2, you can now have downloadable topographic and landscape maps. I should note, these are not preloaded on the watch. With the Apex 2, you actually do need to download those for your region. You can see a video on how to do that top right corner. And just like some of the other Coros models now with that touchscreen, you can scroll around the map really easily to see where you're at, look at the terrain features. The navigation is definitely enhanced on the Apex 2. As far as the accuracy of the GPS goes, I found it to be pretty darn good. I did a couple comparisons to the Apex 2 Pro right here, but I did do both watches on all systems on, so it a, should have been a pretty fair comparison. You can see the Apex 2 in blue, Apex 2 Pro in the orange. You can see it looks like the Apex 2 in the blue is a little bit tighter on some of the turns. One thing that's really interesting looking at this data, so there was actually a 3% variance in distance recorded from the Apex 2 versus the Apex 2 Pro. But the Apex 2 Pro recorded 4.85 kilometers, whereas the Apex 2 did 4.71 kilometers. Same route, stopped them almost exactly at the same time, so just a little bit of variance there, kind of curious about that. However, I did test both of these watches on the road as well, so not a lot of tree cover at all. You can see it's pretty much right on top of each other, pretty darn accurate. The actual variance in the distance was only 0.1%. They were both basically identical, so out in the open, no issues with little tree cover. So overall, when it comes to the accuracy of the Apex 2, whether you're on the road or in the woods, on the trail, I think overall it's gonna be pretty darn good. Another big change to the Apex 2, which has been really welcome, is a completely redesigned next-gen heart rate sensor. This actually has eight LEDs on the back now with wear detection to get your heart rate while you're doing those activities. You can also do HRV tests with this now thanks to the electrocardiogram sensor in there. It's just an, a much improved heart rate sensor. And I did some tests to prove that. So let's take a look at the data here. So what you're seeing right here is the Coros Apex 2 in red and the Coros Apex 2 Pro, but I had it paired to the Polar H10 chest strap. So this was a really good comparison. You can see right away, you notice this climb from the get-go, but you notice that it's a little bit more gradual of an incline with that chest strap. But the Apex 2 does a really good job of keeping up. There's a little bit of a spike right here from the Apex 2, jumps up to 149 versus 141 from that chest strap. But overall, you can see the Apex 2 looks to be pretty darn accurate. Right here, I paused the watch to do some running drills for form and kind of running economy. And then I resumed it here and you can see again, uh, just the overall band was a little bit smoother from the chest strap, which we totally expect, everybody expects that. But as far as the heart rate readings from the Apex 2 itself, that is pretty darn amazing. We've only got like one beat per minute variance right there, which is just phenomenal. I mean, that's way better, way better than the Apex 46 ever was. Obviously, the Apex 2 still has the barometer, the compass, the altimeter, the gyroscopes, all of that built inside there, no change. Some of the other neat updates with the Apex 2, you can actually control your GoPro now. You can turn it on, turn it off with your watch, which is kind of cool, kind of a neat feature. There's also altitude mode, which will give you regular evaluation of those SpO2 readings in your fitness when you're at high altitude. That was never an option on the Apex series at all. Previously, that was always on the Apex Pro. So now you can get it in the Apex 2 which is a really awesome welcome feature. A couple of other really neat welcome features to the Apex 2, you can actually find your phone from your watch and you can find your watch from your phone. I've got my app pulled up here. I can easily just click find device and then this starts beeping. Pretty darn cool. But what's probably even more handy is the find my phone feature because let's face it, you're probably gonna have the watch on your wrist. It's gonna be a little harder to lose than your phone. Hit the find my phone button and then this goes off. 
Another big update is you can now store music straight on the Apex 2. Again, not an option on the Apex 46 or the 42. Uh, keep in mind there is no actual streaming yet from a third party service. Quoros is looking into that in the future, but right now you can actually store MP3s on the watch, pair your headphones, your wireless headphones, whatever you want to wear with the watch via Bluetooth and go stream that music from the watch and listen as you run. But you do need to keep in mind the Apex 2 does have eight gigabytes of internal storage. That's to be used for those downloadable maps like we talked about and also your music. So you need to keep an eye on that space possibly. As far as activities go, really the only activity that is not on this watch that Quoros offers on some of their watches is the multi-pitch climb. It's not on this, but everything else is. So you can pretty much do anything. And now when it comes to price of the Apex 2, there is one difference over the Apex 46. So the Apex 46, if you remember, was about 350 bucks. Now the Apex 2 is $399, so about $50 more. But honestly, I think it is well worth it. We talked about all those additional features that this watch has now, very similar to the original Apex Pro. It's very similar to that. So really uh, 50 bucks more for that, totally worth it. This watch is phenomenal. I think if you're an ultra runner, you're gonna love this watch. Well, the Apex 2 has been out now for a couple of weeks. So let me know if you have had the chance to try it, if you've had any issues, if you've loved it, whatever your experience is, let us all know below in the comments. I'm sure everyone would love to see those. And if you're looking at possibly getting the Apex 2 Pro, which is right here on this wrist, uh, take a look at the video on your screen, uh, this side right here, go check that out. And then I'll put a playlist of some other Coros videos to check out also. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate you all so much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.